Hi, I'm Kent. Let's explore a flux glaze. Recently, there's been a couple of different things that have been going on that have basically been making me reconsider some of my glazing. Most of my glazes have been uh, Old Forge creations, first five recipes, and basically just a straight up oxide in them, and they produce a nice single color. I've also tried some with some mason stains. However, recently I was going through a bunch of my old planters that I've made and replanting some of the plants that hadn't survived and looking at the ones that I liked. And also in my ceramics class, we've been playing around with some glazes that I've never played around with before. So this is one of the pots that I made and this variegated blue brown effect, I think is really, really cool. I actually need to go and find out the recipe. This is actually two glazes on top of each other and see if I can recreate this myself because I really like it. Had a little bit of crawling on the bottom, but overall it's really good and ignore the form. Definitely beginners work there in terms of pinch pots, but the glaze itself is really cool. So I was looking around some different options and one of the things that Joe has created is a flux glaze to create some more movement in glazes. So I went on to the glazy and went ahead and printed this out. He actually has a couple of different flux glazes. This one doesn't use exactly the first five ingredients, but I had them all. So I went ahead and decided to use this one. So Joe talks about this and he basically says, you know, this will work pretty well with a lot of different colorants and don't use it by itself or it'll be really runny. Or I guess you could, but you'd want to put a cookie underneath for sure. So off camera, I went ahead and measured all of these ingredients out. There's only a few of them. I think the only thing that's not in the original first five recipe is talc, but I had that for a different recipe. So I went ahead and shaked all those up and they're nice and mixed. And so now we just need to add some water. And this is a 100 gram batch that I measured out, so I want basically 90 grams of water. There we go, 90. All right, put the lid back on. Give this a good shake. So this is the first five plus flux. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shake this up a little bit more and let it hydrate. And the way this glaze works is you don't apply it by itself. You basically put it on top of another glaze. So let's pretend this pot has been glazed and basically you could go and like put a little bit over the rim here and it would cause things to flow down or some dots and cause things to flow down. I've got a bunch of pots ready to be glazed. So we're gonna go ahead and try this out. And I wanna do a test. I basically wanna try it with the flux and without. All right, first off are these set of pots. I went ahead and put a base glaze on this already. You probably can't see it but there's a spray coat of a titanium white glaze on the two with the straight walls. It basically sprayed maybe halfway down and there's an overspray. So it kind of gradually tapers out. And the two that are angular, I went ahead and sprayed all the way to the bottom. So I'm gonna put another coat of glaze on top of this of a different color. And in particular, I'm gonna use this glaze. This glaze has some cobalt and some titanium in it as well. And so it'll fire a nice deep blue. And so I have two of each. So I'm basically gonna dip all four of these, try and get them more or less the same. And then on two of them, one of each form, I will put the flux on top. But we'll need to let the glaze dry some before I put on the flux. So this one has the white all the way down. So I'm gonna try and basically dunk it all the way. And when I was cleaning up my shelf, I found these again. I had made these a long time ago. They're basically so I can glaze planters. The idea is that this will go through and seal the hole temporarily so I can use displacement to glaze the pots. So I've got a few videos on using these. And so the idea is you pull it through and pull tightly and the level of the glaze should go up as we push the pot down. And that will also leave the inside unglazed. Oh, a few bales escaped. So we got blue most of the way down. There we go, just on the rim. Flip this over. Same for this one. I think this one was leaking a little bit. I had glaze a little bit further down. Yeah, back here they are. All right, there are the four planters. Now I have a bunch of bowls I wanna do. So let me get these off to the side. So let's reset. Okay, and here are a bunch of my bowls. So these are similar to the other ones. They have the same titanium dioxide glaze on them. Only here, it's the liner glaze and the outside is unglazed. 
So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go ahead and dip these and then the blue will come down basically to where the foot is. And there will be a little bit of overlap on the rim. And for these, I went ahead and put a handle on them. So this is a little bit of gaffer's tape like this. And I basically just fold up a piece and put it on. I know some people use car dent pullers. I just showed you my thing I use for planters. That obviously doesn't work for bowls. This tends to work pretty well. One of the things it does is it does not stick when the pot's wet. And so because I put a liner glaze on it, it took a while for the water to evaporate from the bisque. And if I try and put the tape on too soon, it won't stick. And that says to me, don't glaze this yet because it will crawl. So these have been drying quite a while and the tape's nice and stuck. So it should be good to go ahead and glaze these. So let me go ahead and glaze these six. Some bubbles coming out. And so we'll have some splatters on the inside, and that's okay. One of the things I really love about these handmade glazes is that they dry so fast. That's it. The commercial glazes, it feels like you're sitting there forever waiting them to drip off. Let's see if I can be more even on this one. I've been playing around with spraying recently, but dipping like this is by far my favorite way to glaze pots. However, as you saw with the tumbler shapes, the tall and narrow pots, I couldn't dip all the way to the bottom because I didn't have enough glaze or the tub was too wide. If I had like a five gallon bucket of one glaze, I'd be fine. Maybe one day I will settle on a single glaze that I like or a few that I like. Part of the reason the tape works is that you're mostly pushing the pot down. It's only like right now that it's being suspended. So it doesn't need to hold that much. All right, there are the six bowls. So I think we're done with the blue glaze now, the cobalt. These were pretty wet, so I let them dry overnight. I didn't want the moisture from the flux glaze to cause any issues. So for these four, I think I'm going to go ahead and dip the rim. I don't, I'm not too worried about them running too much because they're so tall. If I dipped a lot, I could potentially have issues running out the bottom, but I think because these are tall, I don't have any issues. Unfortunately, this is too small to dip. So I'm going to need another container, at least temporarily to be able to pour this into. Of course, the other advantage of waiting overnight is that this really is fully hydrated now. And I've got, went ahead and mixed it up a few more times. So let's go ahead and pour it into this container here. So now half of these I want to leave alone. So I'm gonna basically do one of each. There we go, just a few millimeters. And then let's do this one too. All right, again, just a few millimeters, maybe a quarter of an inch. We'll see how far it runs. All right, and now for the bowls. I got the same problem, I can't really dip these because the container is again too small and these have less space for the flux to run down so I think I'm going to apply it differently. I'm going to use one of these little applicator bottles that I think just do around the rim. Let's see if I can get it in without spilling. There we go. Cool. Now I've got six bowls. And I think doing three of them would be a little bit weird. So I'm going to do four, I believe. So I can 
I'm just going to take this and then basically go around the top here. Because some of the blue made it to the inside, this should also create some streaks down the inside. It should be fun. It doesn't need to be perfect because it's going to run. So there's one. See how obvious these drips are once it's fired. But I do have a couple. Like right there. So it's four. I'll leave the other two as controls. I have kind of sort of done this glaze application before without the flux. So here is the cobalt blue, and here is the titanium white, and here's where they're overlapped. And they did blend a little bit, but you can definitely see the line between them. So I'm guessing with the flux, we should get some more flowing. We'll see. All right, I think these are all ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and let them dry out the rest of the way, and we'll put them into the glaze firing and check out the results. So here are all the pots all laid out. So I think I'm gonna start with the bowls. So here are the bowls. Again, they have the cobalt glaze on the outside, and this one's the control. So you can see how on the inside, it kind of faded together a little bit, but there's a relatively crisp line there. However, with the flux glaze, we got this really cool result. So here we can see all this kind of white pattern that showed up as the glaze ran down. There's really not much on the outside. I think this is one spot where there was a bit of a drip. Another one here on this other bowl, and a couple there. But the insides are all relatively consistent where they kind of ran down just a little bit. So putting just that little bit of flux on the top didn't do too much, it didn't run too far. And since it didn't run too far, the ones that I dipped more are actually much more interesting. So here we are side by side again. So just the blue cobalt control and the inside and the outside is just all blue basically. I don't see any of the white glaze kind of peeking through in any meaningful way. But this one here where I dipped down farther, we definitely have this cool band here. It's actually a little bit of texture where it kind of moved. So the flux was definitely working, increasing the fluidity of the glaze. And this is a planter, so no one's going to see the inside, but like on a mug, that would be really cool. And flowing down on the inside. And on these last two, basically the same thing. However, this one here, it ran down some more and I got even more drippies, and this is really cool. I definitely could have dunked this much farther. I was worried that it was going to flow down really far, like, you know, all the way to the foot, and it didn't do that. So I suspect I could put this in, I don't know, maybe halfway, and it would still be really cool. And similarly, there's some fun effects on the inside as well. So I'm going to call this a big win. I think these are really, really cool, and I'm very happy with the results. The bowls are okay, but they could have used some more. So now I'm excited to go and try this a whole bunch more. I'm curious what the blue glaze would look like just by itself in the flux. I want to dip the flux down a lot more, and then I want to try and experiment with different colors as well. I haven't had glaze results like this from a glaze I've made so far, and this is really, really fun. So next time I have some pots to glaze, I'll mix up a bigger batch and try this out again, and I'm sure I'll show you guys the results. In the meantime, if you have any questions or comments, let me know. Thanks.